Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings from Brazil in Campinas. In today's video, we'll be answering the question, how do pilots manage to park their planes so accurately at the parking gate and why is it so important for them to do so? We'll have a look on how it's done the old fashioned way and get an insight of the more modern guidance systems of today's day and age and the most important martial signals. So please remain seated with your seatbelt securely fastened until we have reached our final parking position. <laughs> and let's get started. Airfront 7 Super, follow the line, monitor 1239. 1239 and follow the line. Uh, Good luck. Major airports are often fitted with huge waiting rooms within the gate areas of their terminals. Now, many of them are fully glazed, allowing an excellent view onto the apron and the airport proceedings. If you have ever found yourself looking out of one of those big windows, you might have noticed that all nose wheels of all parked airplanes are perfectly aligned with the yellow line underneath them. Now, this yellow line is the lead in line to the associated parking stand or gate position and usually ends with one or more wider yellow lines called the stop line, which is perpendicular to the lead in line. Now there are various types of parking stands depending on the aircraft type and size, the aircraft's purpose and a few special ones. Commonly there are terminal parking stands primarily catering to passenger planes, cargo parking stands which are often on the other side of the runway connected to big warehouses or distribution centers then you have smaller general aviation or business jet terminals remote parking stands often including helipads or other emergency response aircrafts and vehicles and even in rare cases a bomb disposal parking area but that's a whole nother video right there but today we'll focus on the passenger and cargo planes parking positions now important to know an airplane can either be parked nose in, nose out, angled nose in, angled nose out, or parallel. In every case, parking must always be supervised by an aircraft marshaller. He has to assure that the aircraft is right on the center line and stopped at the exact position with respect to the aircraft type. Now, this is very important because only at the exact position the aircraft is or at least should be totally free from any obstructions surrounding it and ground crews might have already positioned their vehicles accordingly to instantly attach to the plane once the engine and the beacon light are turned off. Nowadays most of these bridges are able to move around all three axes but the more accurate the plane is parked the better the air bridge fits to the plane and the less movements of the delicate moving mechanism of the air bridge is required. But back to the marshaller. Now, if the marshaller were to guide the airplane manually into its stand, he would do this by using standardized marshalling signals. Now, since aircraft marshalling is usually a form of visual communication, the marshaller will use handheld ones bright colored pedal boards or illuminated beacons to direct the pilot on the inputs needed to stay on the lead in line and come to a full stop. Note that there are different standards for marshalling applications, therefore the signals can slightly vary, but today we'll focus on the most important ones established by the ICAO. So the first one would be with the arms raised straight up, identify gate or ready to guide you signal. Then we have the taxi ahead or straight ahead by moving the arms inwards. Now, in case you have to make a right turn to correct, he will keep his left arm straight, pointing left, and the right arm continues with the waving motion. Same goes for a left turn. The right arm pointing away and the left arm keeps waving up and down. If the plane is closing in on the stop line and the marshaller wants you to slow down, he moves the ones downwards and makes a padding gesture with both arms. For a normal stop, he will raise his arms slowly above his head until the ones cross. Once the plane has come to a full stop, the marshal will clench a fist, signaling the pilot to set the parking brake. By pointing the ones towards each other, the marshal signals that the chocks are in place. If external ground power is being connected, the marshal will use this signal. Those are the basic marshalling signals you need to know. So a big thank you to Airport Rampman for providing his video. In some cases, you even have two marshallers, especially when coming in with the 747. One marshaller is near the stop line, 
signaling the main marshaller, who might have positioned himself on an elevated stand to be better visible for the pilots in the high cockpit, when the plane is closing in to the stop point. I have huge respect for these guys as they work at any kind of weather, day in and day out, and so much stuff can go wrong, especially in very tight parking stands. In addition to the marshaller, many nose-in stands are equipped with so-called SEGs, the Stand Entry Guidance System. Now, this term includes many different systems which, dependent on the system, can either inform the pilot about the stop position of his particular plane, provide centerline guidance, or a combination of both. Now, here are the most common systems which are also known as the VDGS, the Visual Docking Guidance Systems. Now, the simplest and the cheapest, but also the most inaccurate system is the AGNIS, short for Azimuth Guidance for Nose In Stands, and only shows whether or not the aircraft deviates from the center line. If it does, the system indicates the direction the pilot has to steer in to correct the airplane's orientation. It usually consists of two rectangular panels which can change their display color from green to red. Now, when the nose wheel is on the center line, both panels are green, signaling the pilot that no steering inputs are required. When the plane is a bit off to one side, the panel on this side changes its color to red, indicating that the pilot has to then steer towards the side of the green panel. Think of it like a directional light bulb. Since the AGNIS does not inform the pilot about when to stop, other aids such as the PAPA are often installed as well. PAPA stands for Parallax Aircraft Parking Aid and usually consists of a box with a horizontal cutout. Now, inside the box is a fluorescent white light stick and around the cutout there are marks for the different aircraft types. When the pilot moves the airplane further into the stand, the stick inside the box will appear to move along the different marks. Now, the right position to stop is reached when the mark for the particular aircraft is aligned with the stick. Now, the downside to the system is that the board is offset from the center line, and so the pilot must alternate his view between the two guidance systems. Berlin Tegel used to have an infamous retro PAPA system. It was called the Side Marker Board, which was a large board with different markings for different aircraft types. Now, each marking had its own little panel next to it. Now, the panels were green on one side and red on the other. When you taxied onto the stand, you were facing the green side. Your particular stop position was reached when you could neither see the green side nor the red side. If you're seeing the red side, you've moved too far in. <laughs> It's old but gold, I can tell you that. Now, instead of a papa, there can be simple traffic lights or mirrors for the pilots to check on his stop position as well. Now, note that almost every visual aid that makes use of the pilot's perspective is designed to be used by the pilot sitting on the left-hand seat. First officers only do navigating and communication with ATC on ground. Now, more modern guidance systems are called AVDGS, with the additional letter A standing for advanced. Now, those systems are far more precise and usually feature LED displays, which provide electronic centerline guidance and stop information, as well as additional information such as the gate number and the aircraft type. Now, many of them use lasers and infrared cameras to not only provide guidance, but also scan the stand area for possible obstructions potentially damaging the incoming plane. Now, this allows for those systems to be operated in extremely poor visibility as well. Now, the following are the most common ones. RLG docking systems, for example, features a combined laser and display unit, which shows information about the aircraft type at the top. Below that is the remaining distance, and in the bottom left corner is an arrow that shows the aircraft position relative to the stop point, as well as green and red light bars, similar to the AGNIS system for centerline guidance. Another system is the Safe Dock by ADB SafeGate. Now, this system features one big display that on top shows again the aircraft type, and below that, a scheme of the lead inline. Now, when the airplane approaches the stop position, an arrow at the bottom and the arrows on either side 
indicate the current nose wheel position relative to the center line as well as the necessary steering inputs required. The column that represents the center line disappears with decreasing distance to the stop point. Regardless of whether a marshaller or an electronic system is used to guide the airplane onto the stand, the pilot in command is always the one ultimately responsible for the safety of the aircraft as well as the parking procedure. Now, prior to turning onto the parking stand, the pilot shall always confirm that the area is clear and that the particular docking system is switched on displaying the correct aircraft type and is working properly. As a first officer, help out your captain by monitoring the area as you turn into the stand. If a system fails or is not working correctly, the pilot in command shall immediately stop inform ATC about it, which will then assign a marshaller to help finishing the parking procedure. That's it for today. If you have any more questions or explanatory notes regarding the marshaller or the guidance systems, feel free to use the comment section below. Thank you very much for your time. Here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check, activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, perform a touch and go at my website, check, and don't forget, a good pilot is always learning, wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.